Hello, everybody. This is Captain Sweet coming from you from the Duncan Command Center. Now, I've got a problem. I've actually got a lot of problems. You probably know some of them watching from far. I don't quite fit in to the norm. I don't quite want to do things the way everyone else does things. And my production value is a little low. And maybe my costumes, maybe my everything. But I do have something that I believe has value. But because maybe the things you're used to being kind of good, you might evaluate what it is I'm trying to say, perhaps not in the most positive vein. I've come to the conclusion that this may be so. Because there's the difference between Captain Sweep, the person, and the ideas coming through him. Now, this may or may not have grabbed your attention. Most probably not. Sounds like the beginning of a whole bunch of excuses for why Captain Sweep is not quite sailing the seas with his mighty fleet as he has been aiming at. Instead, he is in a robo. Robo? <laughs> a ro rowboat. And perhaps people may think, well, maybe it's because you're stoned all the time. <sighs> and if you're an artist, you might have that same sigh and go, well, just to put up with this planet. This is my vice of choice. And before I had to hide it because it was illegal, but now everyone does it anyway. So most people who do smoke it are usually quite a bit chill. Anyway, that's another topic. But what I'm trying to say is if you look at, let's say this team synergy map behind here, it's a tool. It's a way of placing information. And the green here, this is potential, and this is probationary, and this is active. So the idea is when you're moving people in your business, you're moving them generally from potential to probationary to active. That's business. Someone comes in the store, they look around, they maybe look at a few things, their potential. It's only when they buy that they're active. And probationary is that kind of in-between state where you're going, hmm, do we really want to do business with one another? You might have bought something or interacted, but it might not work out. Potential, probationary, and active. And if you have a way to show it, it's visually kind of nice. And so what this does is it does it for eight different teams for nine and 12 people, four nines and four 12s. And so what this is, is a tool for people who are building large network customers or partners or allies together. This is just one of lots and lots of tools that I've designed that are at the prototype stage. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm doing enough. I need a bit of a hand. And I don't have like $10 million, $5 million, $3 million, or whatever that people go to get their IPO and get all their money. I don't want to do it that way. I actually don't think that's real. I think the money markets <coughs> and, bus <coughs> and business in general is insane these days. Like we, we've come to the point in our society where illusion has replaced reality. And then everyone's talking about this illusion as if it's reality. And if I'm wearing a funny hat, it's just, 
I, I, I just can't participate in that type of illusion. And I know there's a few people out there who are like that. People who can see he passed, ah, and go, okay, well, maybe he's not a pirate. Maybe he's just acting a part. Maybe I just like having something nice on my head. And so I don't think people tend to talk honestly or authentically about the, tr the truth, really, of who you are and what you believe in and how you may be sickened by the way the reality is because you have to participate in it and so you want people to think you're in a positive mind frame and that you don't think that everyone's a bunch of idiots uh, running around in some insane play. But me, it's the internet. There's got to be 144 people out there. There's got to be 144 people on the planet who go, you know what? We want to try something new. And if you spent 30 years, 10 hours a day, mapping conceptual maps, maybe you just might have an idea that'll work. And if I may, over the years, I've come across a bit strange, eccentric, insane. It's because I was. You get so frustrated with having something that's so valuable and watching how people interact in life. Okay, I'm going to work 40 hours a week for $12 an hour. Give the best of my time to somebody who doesn't give a shit about me and isn't thinking of my best interests is utilizing me like what? A slave. To get out of this slavery is going to take us doing it together, it is gonna to take us actually having to get along for long enough to set up the infrastructure and the marketing so that everyone does well. Like just imagine that, 144 individuals coming together and one of their sole aims is to help everybody else. Like, what an idea. If I had gone to school and, and at least five people in the school were there to actually help me find my gifts, actually help me when I didn't understand something, actually help me to find out why I'm emotionally a basket case at some times. But no, we go to school where there's some freaking teacher at the front talking to 30 kids who have no interest in what the frick they're talking about. Packed into these rooms, not allowed to move, not allowed to study what we're interested in, always having to go along with some teacher who fundamentally doesn't seem that intelligent to you. So, we're, we're brainwashed, we're indoctrinated and then we, in, in a way of acting, interacting, thinking that keeps the slavery going. And everyone's in it. I'm in it, you're in it. It's not like somebody escaped it. Maybe a few Jesuses and Buddhas who, who sort of really did the work and got out and now they're out. But fuck, now they're fucked because holy shit, when you're out, you're out. Right. If you do not go along with the system, if you are sort of a, a naysayer or a, a conspiracy theorist or basically anyone who is sort of calling bullshit constantly, you're kind of kicked out. You're not really involved. You're not asked to the parties. You're not asked to be involved in the boards, the whatever it is. Even though you may be holding the actual remedy for the problems that everyone is facing. And the main problem is a lack of communication skills. That's a starting point. Real listening, but then being able to speak the truth to power or speak the truth to the group, speak the truth to everyone that is actually your truth. 
And it may be that I feel shitty right now. I don't feel connected to any of you. And I think you're all full of shit. And this is in a normal business meeting. And everyone goes, what can we do to make you feel more connected? Or you're right, I have been talking bullshit. Or I feel that way too. And everyone feels that way except the boss who thinks everything's great because no one actually tells the boss the truth. And everyone gives about 20% of their effort. And when they go home at night, they don't think about it at all. As opposed to seven people that are super vibed, super passionate, super into the work. And the boss doesn't even know how to deal with these freaking nutballs because they're actually choosing to be there and they're being treated right. And their gifts, creative gifts are being utilized, not stifled. And I find myself speaking right now more than the two minutes, the three minutes, or the five minutes. This is just me beginning to open up about an idea that I've been holding inside for so long. And every once in a while, I would bring it out in the worst circumstances to somebody who wasn't interested. And I use that as my gauge. Just checking to see if I was recording. I've done that before, get on a roll, think I'm doing this big thing and I'm not even recording. <sighs> that is your gauge. I don't finish sentences. I can get bored very easily. I could just walk out of a room if I'm not interested. I have rude behaviors, I know. But it was my way of dealing with life. And some of them are weaknesses and some of them are decisions. Some of them are skills. But whoever I am is not what was portrayed to the world. It was only portrayed to the few that I spent time with. And around people I love, I don't feel eccentric or disassociated or weird. I like life. I like people. I love people. I love my friends. If I spend time with you, I spend time because I love being around you. We were learning. And I spent time with amazing people over the last 30 years. My whole trip has been trying to find spiritual truth. My whole trip has been attempting to make sense of this world. And that doesn't mean that I was good at it. And that doesn't mean that I'm better than you. That doesn't mean that I'm more spiritual than you. It only means that I had that interest and I studied it. And for me, it was like reading books. Most of the time, my spiritual masters are about spiritual masters. You know, I talk about it with friends wanted to talk about it and early on in life I didn't know many people who did or we didn't I mean before the age of 20 I had no religious or spiritual life my mom took us to this Unitarian church we got too rowdy she took us out she saw we weren't that interested they were Unitarians but to me I'm coming to the point in my life where you know, if I die tomorrow, within the year, did I, did I accomplish what I was trying to do? Because at some point in your life, if you escape the matrix, you're, you're led by your destiny, your purpose, you're, you're trying to do something. And whatever it is that you're trying to do, you get pretty into and what happens is you go pretty far into it and then you lose everybody because like a biologist who's been studying PhD type stuff, mitochondria for 15 years and they're talking about, you know, on the left ball, it's different from the right ball by this much and you're going, what are you talking about? What 
revolves around a mitochondria. There's no shared reference point for understanding one another. So that's happened to me because this idea has come through, which is self-referencing, which is different from other ideas. It's different from the norm. It's different from other philosophies. <clears throat> it's a combination of many. And something has come through. Now, I might say it's... Uh, I don't know where... You could say high self, you could say soul, you could say God, you could say creator, you could say goddess, you could say unconscious mind, collective mind, Jesus, Buddha, Allah. Lots of names, lots of words. The words symbolize something that's real. Whatever is real, Perhaps it can't be named like they say. You can't talk about there is God. And God is doing this. And it's in this book that God did that. You think a book or a human can interpret what that type of intelligence can do or not do, is or is not? Can a grain of sand interpret your human existence. You know, we're dealing with some very, very big things now as humans. You know, we're bringing together technologies that are going to affect us in a lot more ways than the plow and the printing press. And those things which we take. I, I feel like I'm beginning to find my voice where I don't feel a fear about what I'm going to say and how it's going to affect you. Whether I'm pausing too long, whether I sound right or look good. All of these are factors and limits to who we are and how we express ourselves. There's this fear that we're not good enough or fear that I'm gonna piss you off. Whatever is that fear, it's not just like a, a fear of uh, a barbarian coming in the door with an ax and hitting you in the head and you're, uh, we better lock the door, <laughs> uh, give me the gun. <laughs> that type of like physical fear for your life it's very different from a mental fear of minor consequences. And I think when we're talking about fear, we have to distinguish between types of fear. Because certain types of fear are very subtle and stop you before you're going to do something. And that's different from, let's say, a general fear that, oh my God, I don't want to do it because... I know this is going to happen. They're going to beat me up. Versus walk into a room and talk to a, a classroom of high school students. Who, to me, might be some of the most fearsome groups on the planet right now. See, I'm talking here to an empty room. There's no one here. And I'm talking to a screen. But I've learned to talk in this manner to say what I got to say. I've been speaking to phones. I've been filming myself. I've been being filmed for a long time now. Thank you, Tammy Lee Meyer and Rick Lockenberg, the rest of people's network. Because before that, I didn't like filming. I was like everybody else. I couldn't look at myself on film. I didn't like how I looked. I didn't like how I sounded. And even now, when I see a hair coming out of my ear or I see the wrinkles, the white hair, or whatever it is that I'm looking at, I'm, I'm oh God, this is what I look like. But there is a side of me that has accepted 
<clears throat> and looks at me and goes, you know, this is what you look like, whether good or bad, ugly or, or not. And I think a lot of people don't do this because of how they feel about themselves, about how they look. And yet they walk around all day you know, doing what they're doing and they're not hiding. You know, when you walk around in life, you have to accept this is what I look like and, and no one is actually going, oh my God, look at them. But when we get on camera and when we are seen like this, it's different, isn't it? And I seem to be jumping like usual all over the place and this is sort of how I can be. But sometimes it's building up to an idea that needs a few different parts and perspectives in order to put the pieces together so that you are, can understand what I'm trying to put forth. And if you're with me so far, you may want to understand what I'm putting forth because you're starting to get, maybe he's got something that no one has. Like I truly believe that what has come through me isn't on the planet. There's no one else who has done what this is. I'm not repeating somebody else. This is original work with standing on the shoulders of giants. I mean, believe me, I've studied a lot of people that are very intelligent, spent a lot of time with people that are very intelligent. And whatever's coming through me seems to be coming from a place of intelligence. But I don't know if I'm that intelligent. I think I'm just curious. Because a lot of the time, I don't know how to put it together. And funny enough, when I smoke marijuana, it puts me in a certain state that relaxes me enough and has me have a good enough feeling inside that then my, I focus. And I, I can, like this, I can focus for a period of time and create something. And I've got ideas and prototypes and things around me that have come through the years of doing this that are an actual part or piece to this idea. There's game boards, there's card sets, there's maps, there's processes and software. Maps, card sets, game boards, processes and software. This is called the New Paradigm Toolkit. The idea being that to move from the old paradigm of thinking to the new paradigm of thinking, to move from fear to love, to move from trying to kill each other to get along with each other, we need tools. We need learning, creativity, communication, and healing. Learning, creativity, communication, and healing. If every human being has those skills, they know how to talk, they know how to create, they know how to learn, they know how to heal. You, you will create your own life. You can do anything with those skills. And believe me, if you go to school and I'm learning about math or I'm learning about English, or I'm learning about, I'm learning, right? But how many classes do you get when you were growing up on learning how to learn? This is like some super human skill set that I found out later on that there's actually ways to learn. You know, someone had figured out if, you, if you're sitting in a chair and listening to Mozart and watching images and it's a big comfortable chair, you can learn foreign languages, something like, I don't know, 500 words a day. They've been teaching people actual results and what I see this is what I think I'm watching humans are getting dumber our schooling system doesn't work and it doesn't work because its main aim is a control mechanism and that's one of the problems I run into let's say politically about what I may be saying is that I'm questioning 
the fundamental use and reality of all of our systems. And Buckminster Fuller said that we need to build a new system. And I agree with him. I don't think we can salvage what is there. It's corrupt. It's manipulated. And if the people that are get involved, I don't know. They're a very different type of people. And that distance between reality and illusion, they don't seem to mind. And right now, on the planet, we have to deal with a lot of problems. I mean, there are the problems of dealing with an insane system that is actively attempting to attack us, whether it's through chemtrails, fluoridation, bad education, taxes. It's endless right now. Human beings are being strained beyond belief in ways that we do not need anymore. There's billions of us and hundreds of thousands of them. So I'm not afraid to speak like this because I'm not against anybody. I want you to have a good life. I want all of us to have a good life. And I don't want to go out there and kill anybody. Big plans of attack. I want to design and create with other people an architecture for a world that is good for everybody. And I think there's going to be a lot of people at some point that are going to be on our side because fundamentally the good people of the planet need to start organizing together to create a new system and if no one else on the planet is doing it or wants, I mean, okay, start here. I know there's a lot of others who want to do the same thing and are doing initiatives like this. But what I believe this is, it's an integrative idea. It can integrate other conceptual models. It can bring in other people's visions. It can give them the tools to bring their visions into the world. So it's like an operating system to connect us and then tools on top of it to do what it, whatever we're going to do. But fundamentally, we're going to build a software system that has got to be, you know, for the people, by the people. It's a way to live your life that is going to incorporate, you know, true voting. True voting. So it's a big step. And to me, you start with where you're at. You start with wanting to design or create a better life. Most people need a hand. Most people need help to get ahead right now. And the churches aren't doing it in the way that people need. The NGOs aren't doing it in the way that people need. The government isn't doing it in the way that people need. The corporations aren't doing it in the way that people need. We can conceptually design structures of human interaction and then go through research, go through, you know, true attempts for human beings to come together in new ways. And I call this a dream space. The space is actually a dream space. And in the dream space, anything can happen. I had a building in downtown Victoria for almost a year, 5,000 square feet, for nothing. Given as a gift by a born-again Christian who I had met at a health fair outside of a conspiracy booth, and we had a chat for five minutes, and we just connected. We connected through spirit. We could both see that the other person was a genuine you know, spiritual seeker. He was coming through Christianity. And I was coming through whatever the heck I'm coming through. I won't even give it a name. 
but I, if it's Christian or Muslim or uh, Jewish or Hindu, Buddhist, there's truth in them all. But we have to decide for ourselves which we're going to live. And to me, the religion, just the name, identifying with a dogma, identifying with a group of rules that have come through history right now, to me, it has to be truth. It has to be truth of time. And all of these old religions and dogmas have been fighting in certain ways. Even if they're not fighting, as I wouldn't say, like to me, there's oppressive and non oppressive religions. Oppressive religions want their religion to be the only religion, and everything outside of them are sort of bad, evil, devil, whatever it is. And they can treat those people bad, but they got to treat their people. But non-oppressive religions have their own worldview, and they're not out there attacking other worlds. They say, hey, how do you, you guys do what you want. We're, we love you too. We're just doing things our way. Those are two very different types of religions. Because one of them is in the middle of war on the planet right now. Whether it's Christian or Muslim or Jewish, those to me seem the three nutballs. <laughs> nut balls because you're creating so much misery for everybody else and yourselves by actually believing the political bullshit of your leaders or and, and whoever not whoever's creating all these nut ball things. And so to me there's this dynamic, you know, sort of dealing with the nut balls and then designing and creating the world that you want. Usually the people who are designing, creating the world you want, they don't want anything to do with that type of negativity. And the ones that are dealing with all the, you know, or at least researching, understanding the nutballs, they have a hard time connecting with those that are designing a new world because they're filled with negativity because they're dealing with having to try to understand how to deal with nutballs that are horrible to people. So I believe that in our time, within the next 10 years, this is it. You know, we're either going to do it or we're not. We're either going to change or we're just going to create a freaking hell for the generations to follow. And you've got to see it, right? We're, we are in a planetary emergency. And whether it's David Suzuki or all these other people that get the limelight, when they say it, well, people listen. But even then, people really don't listen. Because they're still in that old system in a way. The people that are going into the future are going to be people you don't even know. People you haven't heard about. Fringers. People have been working a long time on something completely different. And in a hundred years, they're the ones in the textbooks. But the Teslas of today, they need to be supported. That's what this to me is about. Connecting those who haven't got the support. Connecting those and supporting those who have good ideas, good hearts doing good things, but have got zero from the government, the corporations, the people. I've seen a lot of incredible people barely surviving, holding knowledge that the whole species needs, and barely anyone knows who they are. Almost no one is helping. And I'll tell you, emotionally, this can be a bit cumbersome. So I feel like I'm getting to the end of whatever I'm saying. 
sure most of you stop listening, but to those who are still listening, I would say you are true students and I will share, I'll teach. It's not like I'm some big guru who's better than you. I just spent, again, 30 years, 10 hours a day doing one thing, abstract modeling, systems design. And I'm sure there's a kid out there who can 10 seconds pick it up and do it better than me. But whatever I show them, it came from all of that. And I feel good about it. I did the work. Maybe that's being arrogant. Maybe that's being full of myself, which in England or Canada we don't like. We're different from Americans. But I, I want to find 144 people who want to do this. I want to find hundreds of thousands of people that want to learn this. We can do it now, online. We can change the world. We have a window. They're going to try to stop the internet be what it could be. And if you don't think that you're in a, let's say, a battle, you're very naive. If we don't stand up and do something, it will be done to us. And what will be done to us, we won't like. But if we stand up and do something, we will create. I don't know what we'll create. But it, it's our deeper virtues, it's our higher values. It's love, it's mercy, it's goodness, it's humility, it's gratitude, it's truth. You know, these things mean something. These things, when they are in you, when you value them, when you, when you aim high for the ideal, you drive yourself crazy and everyone else around you, just so you know. But it becomes something that's your reference point for life for interpreting it, for being it. It's, it's, your, it's your God being, it's your creator self. It's like you choose the virtues and the principles and the values you want to live by. That's your philosophy. Don't let anybody else tell you what or how. But you spend the time to learn it. And if you don't know it, go to people who seem to know what they're talking about and maybe listen just a little. Another thing, sorry, I'm going to keep going just a little bit. The School of Conscious Communication is a school for all those people that don't want to participate in the normal ways of doing things, but want to have a community, want to have a tribe, want to have a place to learn how to communicate. What a concept. This is the longest video I think I've done trying to explain the idea. I always do snippets that don't doesn't explain anything in reality. It's hard. How do you explain 30 years of work? How do you explain you know, what language does to the mind? Then how do we perceive the world through our conceptual universe? I might have lost you by saying something, but this is, this is like really, really important. Our mind is like a house. And depending upon how you put the rooms and the furniture together is how your house operates. And so your worldview is the way, is like the, the blueprint for the type of house. And then your beliefs are kind of like where the walls go. And I guess the furniture is like your values. Sorry, I'm just thinking about that. I, I mean, that's sometimes metaphors or ideas come through that maybe you haven't thought of before and you're just trying to they just come through as you're talking.
would that mean that the bed is love? <laughs> anyway, so if you watch this, you get it. You think I'm not full of shit. And you go, okay, sweet. Okay. We'll go to your school of conscious communication. We'll be one of your 144 people. And I know you're going to be an intense motherfucker. <sighs> Imagine bringing 144 pirates together. I mean, that's why I like this. It's not like 144. La, 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 la. It's 144 people there. A little bit probably pissed with life. It's the way it is. They want to change it. But they don't want to be screwed around. And if I'm the guy, the wizard, you understand the kind of pressure? So I'm just saying, like, sometimes ease up. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm not like some, da -da 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 -da. everything's going to be great. You know, I've got my limitations. One of the reasons I haven't come into the world much with this work is I don't really want to deal with human beings. They're nuts. Freaking nuts. They either love you like everything or hate you. And something in between, maybe. Like you're trying to do something. I mean, you just rub people the wrong way if you're trying to do something new. I think this is going to be one of those videos that will be shown after I die and they'll go, that's what he was trying to do. That's what he was talking about. Figures it. Well, now that I got you, I want to add a little bit more. The very secret plan. The very secret plan is this. Captain Sweet has a plan, and it's not so secret. He calls it the very secret plan because he actually has a sense of humor. He thinks that if he calls it the secret plan, well, people are either actually not think about it that much, which actually is happening. It actually works. It's like hiding something in plain sight called the secret plan, and you can kind of do whatever you want. Kind of nice being here with you. I've never had someone who was such a good listener. I've never had someone who's patiently letting Captain Sweep say what he's got to say. And I'll tell you something about romance. If you can listen to somebody's story, you can witness the other person. You can have a true curiosity about who that person is. That will make your relationships go way farther than anything else. We, we need witnesses for our life. For me to share this with you, it's important some point I would want all my friends or anyone who's ever known me to watch this video more so than any other video that I've ever done. I feel as if I'm starting to get this off my chest. And once you have, then maybe I can just sort of meditate, be quiet, and not really deal with any of you. Right, Delaney? So many beautiful people that I know that need help. And they give a lot of help. Sometimes you give too much help and then you get worn out. And if you're not getting it back, you don't even feel good about life. And I've seen that's what's happened to myself 
and others because there's no container. You know, I want to help the village. I want to help my community. I want to contribute to people's lives. I want, I want people to go, that's a good guy. He's doing good things. But I find in this society, when you can live beside someone for five years and not even know who they are, we, we, we tend to go to our friends and our family, but we don't have a community. That's one of the biggest things that has been taken from us by the way the cities are designed and the way our life has been designed. And whether it's in the plan or the, or the school of conscious communication or a shared knowledge community, what I would like to see is everyone really liking each other, a very loving environment, a very supportive environment, and Kind of like what I've heard of Mbutu, where if somebody maybe does something not so good, you bring them to the center and then everyone says something nice about the person and remind them of who they are. Isn't that nice? You know, we have such a punishing society. You know, our whole legal system, ticket system, everything, it's it's a parasite. I mean, if, if someone has done something wrong, it would be good to have a culture that looked at itself and went, well, how do, okay, you know, if someone's homeless and hungry and they're stealing, well, maybe we need homes and food. Maybe we should just put this person in a concrete cell for 20 years. That's the world we need. We need to have a loving world. And if I have an intention, if I have anything within me, that's what I would like. And I mean, maybe I'm not the most loving person, but I want to learn how to be. And I find that because of my isolation and disassociation, that I, I feel apart, I feel disconnected. And I don't like that. I have had times in my life where I feel connected. And it's way better. You know? And I think there's a lot of people out there who feel disconnected and don't feel loved. And we can, we can actually find connection through this. I think actually in a Facebook message that you can actually communicate with people in a way that I've never communicated. You don't have to look at each other. There's time in between. And you get to express. But it's not always easy. We, always, we don't always make the right moves. So, okay. I think I'm coming to the end. listening I'm very appreciative and if you uh, if you agree with me and you'd like to participate in some way I'm very appreciative in the school there's clients students facilitators teachers administrators and originators I'm like an originator. And originators have their own field of knowledge. They're different from teachers. They can teach, but they're not false. You know, they're, they're not going to be like a normal teacher. Te you need teachers to teach what the originators have come up with. <clears throat> uh, the administrators are just kind of running things behind the scenes, making sure that everything runs right. Teachers are teaching. And it could be anybody, really. And facilitators are more people who want to learn how to get groups communicating and working together. And students are people who feel like you're just starting out, you don't want to have any responsibility, 
you want the facilitators, the teachers, the administrators, and the originators to help you. And then the clients are anyone out there who has a problem that, that wants a sort of like a, a new way of dealing with it, One, like knows that communication is part of the problem and you need help. You either need some training or you need, uh, you need the school to assist you in what you're doing. And the idea is that we're holding a lot of intelligence. We're a shared knowledge community is very vibrant, filled with a lot of people who want to help everybody. And um, so it's a good place to come to, to get help. And you pay money. And I'm not quite sure the full economics of everything, but basically the originators, administrators, and teachers are being paid. Uh, students are paying, clients are paying, and the facilitators might be in between, learning how to get paid and pay. So right now, again, if you see this video and you think you want to get involved, whatever this idea is, it's, it's through more of a research learning sort of lens. You gotta figure this out together. And I don't think I have all the answers. I've just made some tools that have a new way of finding answers. And I think this can be leveraged with everybody uh, in a big way. And so I would like to look at how my work integrates with the other originators and other artists and other anyone. Uh, the idea is to get the tools in your hands and see what you can do with them and then to the school to see how to support you in doing that. So it's an exciting time. It's, it's an exciting life. And um, 